Hey guys, Rough Rooster Knife Sharpening. <clears throat> I've got a knife that I'm going to repair for a customer. Uh, he's been on my YouTube channel for a while. He's on my Instagram. Pretty good guy. Comments regularly. Um, he sent me a Spyderco Gale Bradley. I think this is a two. Uh, yeah. This is a Spyderco Gale Bradley 2 in uh, CPMM4. And he got this thing brand new and was dissatisfied with the edge. And he was talking about sending it back and swapping out for another one. And he showed me what the issue was. And I said, oh, no, man. I said, that's, that's a very minor fix. And I'm going to show you guys what his issue was. And I'm going to show you how to correct it. Uh, I've seen ones a lot worse than this, but uh, these grind issues right back here, I've seen a lot on Spyderco. Um, some of them are an absolute pain in the butt to get rid of, but this is what I do here. So the initial problem is he thought that the back, you know, per se, was extremely recurved. And, I mean, it kind of is but it's not it's not really a recurve it's you know when they when they run on the belt and you know put the edge on it you know this part right back here always gets something you know funky and uh, I'm going to show you guys what it is here if you get you a flat surface like this hopefully y'all can see this on this video maybe I need to get you a flat surface like this and see how you have contact with that flat surface and the little piece hanging off the back do you see more now what I'm talking about like if I put it all the way up on the stone you guys can see the gap right there now if I get there's the gap right there now if I get it and drag it backwards See, there's no gap. So you see how much actually needs to be repaired right there? That, from right here, back, is what we're going to repair and flatten out for him. And we're just going to go ahead and do a full sharpening on it. So, this is how I correct that. <clears throat> I'm trying a new camera angle here. Uh, maybe it'll be a little bit better for you guys I I try to keep my hand out of the way to where you guys can see better but it, it's hard to do sometimes so I'm gonna start I'm gonna lay this thing flat on the stone and see how much you know that I've got to repair here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep this whole grind up off the stone and I'm gonna work the back of it just a little bit this is one thing that I do not like about these duo plates. This base, you've got to wipe it off every time because it it slides all over the place if it gets the least amount of dirt or dust on it. Now my, my regular sharpening stone holder, it can get dirty and all that, and I've never had to clean it. But anyway, you want a good, sure base so you can do your sharpening, especially your profiling. So again, I'm going to bring this up just a little bit, and I'm going to grind on the back. And periodically, I'm going to show you guys the progress here. And this Gail Bradley has a, a very fine bevel on it, as it is. So we need to be sure not to make that any wider and as I go through this I'm going to pull away just a little bit and I'll show you guys why here in just a second see how I'm doing that I'm, I'm dragging but I'm pulling this way Now, you have to be careful doing this 
for a couple of reasons. On my end, this is a customer's blade, and I don't want to screw it up, which I won't, but I'm saying just take your time with this. Don't, don't get irritated with it. So, now you guys can see what I've done here. It needs just a hair more work. And one thing that's very important in doing this is making sure that you make it look good all the way towards the back of the sharpening soil, the plunge grind. Just a little bit more here and we'll be done with this part. So, be sure you kind of don't cut yourself, but be sure to kind of check with the fingers for any dips there. I think I need to bring it up just a little bit more, but I don't think I need to continue doing what I was doing right there because I don't want to, you know, make this part right here deeper than I would the rest of this. So, I'm going to show you guys on the stone again here. You can see that gap right there. I need to take just a little bit more down. I didn't think it was that bad, but take a little bit more down here. Whoop, hit my head on my lot. Now this is kind of what I consider as kind of fading it in, I guess you should say, or you could say. Um, I start on that grind back there at the back towards the plunge grind, and I'm actually working on a larger part of the bevel now. Take a big swap right here and see what it looks like. Oh yeah. We got her fixed up pretty well here. Now, if you guys, let me get a pencil or something here. If you guys will look here, you can see right there, there it's starting to cut up into the main grind. That's what I'm looking for. Before, it was way down here. Not that bad, but you get the illustration. Same thing here. You see that little bit of bitty point right there and what we'll do so this doesn't yeah that's very very sharp so what we'll do we'll put it on the edge of our stone and kind of grind that down just a little bit not much don't use much pressure at all can see the back of it there see how I took that little that little uh, burr well it wasn't a burr it was like a little like a little thorn poking out but now you know if you'd get your finger up there you know yeah you'll cut yourself if you get too close to it anyway but that little nick's gone and it, it's another thing too 
got to get this new camera angle figured out. But another thing too, when, like I was talking about back here towards the sharpening choil and the initial plunge grind here, you want to make that really clean looking. So, I'm going to go ahead and start this bad boy. And by the way, the stone that I'm using, you know, this is M4. It's a very tough steel. But the stone that I'm using is a coarse DMT, which is 325 grit. And the reason that I chose this stone is I wanted a smooth cut so I could repair that. I wanted, you know, a little less aggression. Now, I could have done it on my 220, but that's a lot less grit, which means it takes off a lot more metal. Let's see here. Sorry about the neighbor's loud car. Also, as I had mentioned, this has a very fine bevel. That's another reason I chose to use the 320 grit. Sorry about my hand in the way, guys. I gotta do this for a second. See if I can do it one handed. Yeah. Oops. One thing that I do. You guys can see I'm doing it right now, but one thing that I do when I do some sort of repair like that on any blade, I just go ahead and do a whole reprofile, but that doesn't mean I can't match the existing bevel. Um, I just really correct what they did with the belt. So I'm looking right here and we have got a perfect burr all the way up Let's see if I can get it here we've got a perfect burr all the way up so when that happens you flip it over on the other side and make a burr on that side when you get a burr on that side that means it's ready to go to the next stone and you've got that side completely repaired shouldn't take much here yeah we got one forming a few more passes and we'll have it Got it repaired and we're completely done with the reprofile. Let's see if I can get the yeah, I think I got the burr up there. Now I'm gonna go to my six hundred 
grit DMT, which is a fine. Dawn and water. That stuttering, if you're hearing, hearing, as I'm taking that burr off. Guess I can scoot this back a little bit. Let's see what we've done here. I don't know if you heard that, but we already built up a burr on the opposite side. Got a little bit of a burr up there. Such a fine edge that it's kind of hard to snap it off on the 600. That thing's ready to go right now, but I'm going to push it further. The fellow that, that this knife belongs to asked if I would do a mirror edge on it. I said, sure. Yeah, sorry about that background noise, guys. That guy does that every morning with his damn Mustang. Or every day, I should say. There we go. Now it's smoothing out. This is a 1200 grit DMT, by the way. Oh yeah, that thing's like a laser. Oh yeah. Damn, that thing's sharp. knocked over. Now we're going to go to the Spider Cove Ultra Fine.
Whoops. Did not mean to do that. Don't do that. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but one reason that I haven't been putting many videos out lately is I'm getting, my hands is starting to shake quite a bit. I'm getting the jitters and I don't know why that that's happening. If it gets much worse, than what it is right now I may have to buy a KME or something yeah you guys heard it because I'm just like I'm holding my hands completely still right now I don't know what it is So, there's the beginning part to our mirror polish. Hope that showed up pretty good. Now I got a new stone to show you guys. Yeah. This thing is let's see how long is it? This thing's ten inches long. About three inches wide and an inch thick. I've never used this stone before, but I lapped it and everything, so. This is going to be our final part on our edge. Or our final stone on the edge, I should say. Very nice honing stone. The biggest black Arkansas I've ever had. Got this off a friend of mine. Uh, his name's Alex Peterson. Watches my YouTube channel quite a bit. He's a fellow stone lover and a sharpener. Oh, yeah. This thing right here is on lightsaber mode. 
very very sharp and the treetops are just fine so that took us 25 minutes and 36 seconds to do that so sorry about the lengthy video but uh if you're watching this man i know you will here's your knife sharpened i'll get it in the mail uh probably wednesday today sunday maybe tuesday so oh it won't be tomorrow because tomorrow's veterans day but probably tuesday or wednesday so i'm gonna put you a couple drops of oil on there and there's your Spyderco Gail Bradley 2 and M4 sharpened. No strop needed. You guys have a good evening. Take her easy.